Man, Tanjiro is having a day, huh? Nezuko, Oh, those hops, though. Back in your box, you go until the plot needs you again. It's scary. Every time she goes to sleep, she seems to wake up stronger and more terrifying. She's not fully developed yet, it seems. Are you alright, Tanjiro? Are you okay? At this rate, that's not far off. I don't know how intentional it is, but I always get a feeling from Tanjiro, or I often get a feeling from Tanjiro, that he's holding it together through fighting, or through just action in general. Because if he stopped for a minute, it would catch up to him, just how insane all this all of this is. That's part of what made the Mugen Train arc so refreshing is that there was a moment, you know, there's a moment where it kind of hit him for a bit. What happened with Nezuko is no small thing. It's huge. It's his worst fear, or at least it's up there. That's a door that we can't close. It's going to get worse. As if he doesn't have enough on his plate already, you know what I mean? But the flip side of that, and I guess the more important side of it, and the majority of my feelings are that that's part of what makes him great. The way he's able to turn what he's going through into positive energy. The way he's able to just like grab himself through just sheer force of will and vision and just keep getting stronger and stronger despite all the odds and despite facing your death 8,000 times. Episode 8, Gathering. Yeah, I got a little bit crowded last episode. Tanjiro's not the only one with a hidden sibling. The self-misery and insecurity continues. Here are my insecurities. Take them and do what you will. Funny how, like, patheticness and believing that there are some people born more special than others go hand in hand with these characters. It always comes off as an excuse, or often. Yeah, to be fair, he lives inside of his sister's body, doesn't get out much. Is that how that went down? Yeah, there's no getting to this level without immense pain and sacrifice. This doesn't exist. Set your heart ablaze! Or Goku's legacy pervades all of them. Oh, he's a poison type himself! A big family. That is the most graphic <laughs> flashback image. I didn't expect Uzui backstory, but I'm here for it. I'd to be completely different. Except for the having multiple wives part, I'll take that. But I, I'll just be nicer. I'm so curious about this guy and why they all are so subservient to him. You're one thing that gives me solace in, in dark times is my three wives. <laughs> I got three wives, and they all have really, really big hearts. That is what gets me up in the morning. Does that mean extra to him because he doesn't get fatherly praise? I need to see more about this master. Seems like he's been able to make some peace with his past. Pretty flashy backstory. <laughs> This guy just makes me sad. He just pervades sadness. Damn. <laughs> and the sister takes the hit. Great brother. This is ridiculous. He's fighting two upper level demons right now. Sort of. And he uses them really well. Pretty badass. There you go, he's bleeding. His weapons are awesome. She's been reduced to a totally different character. Just lost it. Almost beaten by Tanjiro, stomped on by Nezuko, and beheaded twice by Tenken. Yeah, this is gonna get real interesting real fast. Like I said, they all have chips on their shoulders, not just Tanjiro. They ruined Zuniso's time, too. He's having a great time in the entertainment district. He had ambitions. And the poison is definitely taking an effect. He's just toughing it off like a warrior. And Tanjiro is here! Man, this feels good. We all made it. Uh, well, Tanjiro mostly made it. Some of his shoulder didn't. Party's over. <laughs> Speaking of having a great time. And that's respect too, he wanted them to run, but that's all changed now. This would be such a game changer if they could 
Take out these demons. Again with the arrogance. Sort of. You figure that out real quick. <laughs> the confidence. Is he really? Is it like Tanjiro and Fevers? Oh, he's adopted them. <laughs> They're all like, uh... <laughs> but he's not wrong. Interesting. So it has to be a team attack. Hey, look who it is! Setting all of our hearts ablaze. Not one person wasn't affected by that. That is a lot of Hashira. Yeah, he's working on something. He was shifting. Like I said, I feel like Zenitsu actually has the best chance of a, like a lucky strike. <laughs> Is that enough? Like, it's the first time Tanjiro's seen it too. You can, you can do this the whole time? They trusted each other. He's still holding a grudge about that. Oh, that's so sweet. And Zenitsu took that personally. How amazing would it be if Zenitsu actually takes her out? Oh man, this is a real thing though. It's a very evil version of a real thing. I see a lot of this zero-sum game type thinking where in order for someone to win, it means someone has to lose. Which is not to say it's not true at all. I mean, scarcity is definitely a real thing in life. Exploitation is absolutely a thing, but that's definitely not the full picture. First of all, it depends on what kind of game you're playing, and not all games are created equal in terms of personal value. For a lot of the really important games, resources are not limited. Things like personal success and self-satisfaction, life satisfaction, those are not limited because I think in its purest form, they are less about circumstance than they immediately appear. I'm not going to say they're totally divorced from circumstance. Second, if they're there actually is an area of scarcity, and this maybe relates more to material scarcity, the solution is not to see it as this amount of things divided among people permanently, and therefore it's a battle for who can secure things. You can look at the fact that there's also growth or progress or changing infrastructure, working hard to condense some kind of knowledge or skill or information into a method that means there is more of a certain thing. And that's a lot harder. You know, it's a lot easier to sort of blame other people and say, everyone who has something I covet has gotten that at my expense, which is very seductive as an idea, because by boiling down all of life into that simple structure, it then sort of absolves you of responsibility, absolves you of the difficult work of making things better, and rather it's sort of just deciding to participate in the game, and gives you justification for wanting to harm people who have more than you, you know, sort of playing to what is already a natural inclination, you know, to, to be jealous, when the truth is, you don't really know. I mean, some people do have things because they have done things susceptibly, but not always. I mean, sometimes they put in more inputs or different inputs, you know, they've worked harder or have worked better or have had an insight that was key. I'm always going to be naturally suspicious when a thought process or idea matches very closely with what are already sort of base desires and base instincts. Things like justifying revenge or other things that serve oneself but harm others just naturally raises red flags. Even if there's a very strong and compelling appeal to emotion in there about injustice or who's been wronged or how unfair things are. It's like you don't want to shy away from unfairness and you don't want to say that everything is great and that there are no bad people in the world and that bad circumstance or good circumstance isn't a major factor, but you also don't want to participate in and make the world that much worse. You know, you don't want to be a destructive force. That's counter to fighting this zero-sum game type thing as it exists in reality. And I feel like often it just ends up being an excuse to dive into one's own darkness and is also often accompanied with what the brother was saying about some people are just born luckier than others. And so I have to do what I can. There's a correlation between how much you absolve yourself of things, how much you're willing to blame other people for things you're not satisfied with, and your own personal strength. Oh, speaking of tandem, that's creepy. Windpipes, very specific. I guess I just hate talk. Yeah, these are more than demons. They're speaking from a different place. It's a very human thing, it feels to me. He's just chilling. <laughs> He's alright. <laughs> I mean, they're both compromised. Tanjiro is missing a shoulder. I don't know if that's... I think it's a little late for evasion. You need help. Oh, he just flipped right out of there. <laughs> oh, he's watching as he flips. Awed by his speed. You gotta let go and fight side by side. Can she see what he sees? Do they have that connection? This feels good. Look at these guys. Yes, this could be awesome. We've had a lot of Inosuke Tanjiro. Having the bond sort of form a triangle like that would be amazing. Then all we'd be missing is Tanjiro Zenitsu. And then finally the three of them which would be epic. That's gotta be coming at some point. Okay. She sort of matches his power too. I'm excited to see what Zenitsu can do. That's a new relationship we just started, you know. 
We didn't know we were Tsugoku until you said it. Oh my god, damn. <laughs> These sequences are so amazing. You can just die. More poison. This is so well done. Something about the colors. <laughs> Damn. There you go, fighting back to back. You never get to overpower them. That's not how it's gonna how victory will come. <laughs> Very flashy. Love it. It's insane. I can't even like follow the action. It's going so it's going so fast. I feel like I need to watch this episode at half speed. <laughs> Damn, we got two awesome fights going on at the same time. Two pairs. And look at Inusuke being level-headed, strategizing. How do they do it? How do they make it look so cool? Tanjiro on defense. Yeah, that's Tanjiro. They're very similar in that way, I guess. Both taking full responsibility for this whole situation. I can't even imagine. How many awesome sequences are they going to put in this episode? The sense of rice hasn't fully taken effect. What just happened? I see she brought artillery. She's been carrying that with her this whole time? These slow-mo reflections on the battle. What am I even looking at? <laughs> it was a blur. And he a little faster than he wanted. He took the hit willingly. They got poison of their own. It would be amazing, I'm also hoping, but... Hard to believe. He just seems a little bit too confident. No, I don't believe it. He knows something that Tanjiro doesn't. And I know that because we got three or so episodes left in this arc. Unless there's another demon showing up, unless Muzan shows up, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this episode. I feel like there's limitations to how I can talk about this. I can say the action is great, but it sort of doesn't do it justice. It's really great. I don't even understand how they can make sequences like this. It like, my brain is seeing it and enjoying it, but not comprehending it. I'm not even gonna try to talk about frames. I don't know. <laughs> I was about to try to make some kind of technical arg technical explanation for this. I don't understand it. It's really well done. It looks beautiful. I really want them to win, which I suspect they will. I feel like they got a lot of things in their favor and we kind of need it. You know, after Rengoku, it would make it so meaningful to have this victory right now, just in so many levels. For them as people rising back up out of the ashes of the Mukin Train defeat, for Tengen and all the Demon Slayers having their first ever victory over a, a high-level demon, putting them on Muzan's radar even more than they already are, basically starting what would be, I expect, an all-out war that there would be no going back from. The confidence boost of them doing that while also doing it together and the bond that would create, with all those stakes behind it, the great action is just made even better. Like, I'm waiting for them to get that final blow. I'm waiting for them to take the demon out. I have a feeling like it's not going to slow down for the next couple episodes. I totally forgot about the Taisho secret. Nin Nin! There you go, pay some respects. I love how he just he became ever present in the story. Oh, they, they talk. Man, we get to see him again. He has lines. Even if it's not real. He won't really have too many wives, though. <laughs> this, look after these boys I cherish whose names I never bothered to learn because I didn't have time. Hey, there you go, that's a title. Confidence in the episode title itself. That was surprisingly great. It hurts that it's, it's just sort of a fantasy, if that. It's just an end credit scene, but yeah, I mean, Rengoku is still alive in all of them. That much is very clear. See, he won. Akaza was wrong. His death is a turning point, for sure.